it's five years since the, the Grenfell fire, um, and there's a commemoration, obviously, every every month there has been, apart from during COVID, uh, with a silent walk. Um, this story is in the in the Morning Star, um, which says that um, local people to the to Grenfell Tower have been suffering from trauma as a result of what they saw. Um, and I'd, I'd like to find out more about how people locally to Grenfell have been um, facing up to, to, to what's happening for the past five years. Uh, Moira, Moira Samuels from the Grenfell Community Campaigners is, is here. Moira. Morning. Morning to all. Uh, can you hear good me? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I, I can hear you. Good to see you. Thank, thanks for coming on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like we've seen the cladding, nothing seems to have been done really about stopping that cladding. Um, and and the, the effect of Grenfell on the local community, I mean, seeing that kind of destruction and the deaths and everything, I mean, that, that hasn't really, has that been addressed really by the government? I think, um, interestingly enough, the media and I believe the government and the local authority would like us to just get over this, um, you know, so they can move on to business as usual. But, you know, it's clear to everyone that actually trauma doesn't really have a sell by date. And, you know, five years on, I think given that we had COVID as on top of that, um, we have, you know, we are like everyone else, um, you know, facing and looking at all the crises that everyone else is looking at. So, um, you know, we're looking at a war, we're looking at a cost of living crisis. Um, and so these things are sort of cumulative. And I think in particular for the um, bereaved and survivors, I cannot speak for them, obviously, um, but I suspect that the lack of justice has been, you know, really, um, impactful in terms of their healing um or you know so i think that's so what what, the what is there. happening with the with the um the justice for the people there i mean i i have there's so much we hear stories every so often but i haven't been keeping up with it can you sort of give us a, a run a run through of what you've seen from the <laughs> We've had 79 weeks of the, of the public inquiry, so there's quite a lot if you want to report on that sort of aspect, but I'm not going to do that. Just to say that um, I think when there was a call for justice, you know, in the days after the fire, I think we wanted truth, we wanted change, and we wanted prosecutions. And I have to say, we got truth in spades at the inquiry. Um, I think we got revelations from the corporates, from local authority, from, you know, government ministers um, about, you know, exactly what happened and their attitudes and how we got there. And we know that actually the deregulation agenda, you know, was one of the key um, factors we also know that many of the companies from Oconic to Celotex to Kingspan lied about their certification. You know, we know that actually the BBR, which is the body which was meant to actually provide this or, or you know, um, uh, reinforce the certification, they as well lied about tests. So what we've seen after five years but through a drip drip of the inquiry is, you know, I think what everybody by now is quite aware of that, you know, Gren Grenfell was part of a neoliberal agenda that was based on focusing on profit and not on people's safety. And you see that, I mean, the, I think the worst we saw recently was Pickles, Eric Pickles. He was absolutely appalling. You know, the arrogance, the disdain, why am I here? Did you really expect me to implement the recommendations from the Lacanal? You know, my junior ministers didn't inform me. Oh, yeah. um, and then what am I doing here? Um, millet, I've got places to go to. It was absolutely appalling. And I think it gave us a real flavor for the fact that the establishment is very, as we saw in COVID, 
is actually they find it incredibly easy to use working class people and in particular working class people of color as collateral to their drive for profit. You know, so I think the, the question of truth, the, the question we've got, and we also know, and it's highly frustrating that there are a number of companies and individuals that in phase two have got immunity from prosecution. So the question of, you know, prosecutions hangs in the air, but the also, you know, the question of change. What have we seen? What is this? We know that public inquiries in British history, if we go back as far as Aberfan, Hillsborough, Spy Cops, we can name them all. They are there to kick the issues into the long grass, mm. you know? Um, and so we ask ourselves, okay, what change are you, are you going to provide as a consequence of this? And we find that the government two weeks ago banned cladding, finally, in law, but it's only for new bills. So retrospectively, those buildings, and of course you can, you have to, it's a real smoke and mirrors. You have to decode everything in incredible detail. And so of course they couldn't ban cladding for retrospectively because it has implications for all those leaseholders that are living, thousands of people who live in, in buildings with the same dangerous cladding or with fire safety issues and who now can't sell their flats and are facing major debt. You know, so you get, and it's not retrospective. You get the fact that there's, you know, there's still no implementations of sprinklers and alarms, which was came out of phase one. There is the, we are now having a fight, which has got very good support and hopefully we're gonna win this fight on personal emergency evacuation plans, you know, for people with uh, mobility issues, because 15 of the 37 people in, in Grenfell who had mobility, um, issues died in that fire, they couldn't evacuate. So, you know, the government's then, oh, well, this is too difficult, it's going to cost too much. You always hear cost. Cost is always implicated in all of this, not the value of our lives and keeping us safe. Yeah, I mean, that, that, what you said about the investigation sort of kicking it into the long grass, I mean, that it was, Theresa May said, we're going to have an investigation within couple of days didn't she of the as if she knew that was the way to do it um so what do you think the future holds for for this well i think as i said um you know one of the key issues that this community is really clear on we're battered absolutely no doubt we are battered you know i don't want to expect any community had gone through this but we're not victims we're survivors um, and, you know, we're not going to just go, well, let's have an inquiry. There's endless inquiries, isn't there? Let's have an inquiry. There'll be a few recommendations. The government will pick and choose which recommendations that they want to implement or not. What we say, we need to make demands now. And, you know, um, and I think our demand is for prosecutions. We may not get them but we're certainly going to demand them because actually there has to be accountability. 72 people could not have you know, needlessly perished with no consequences, with no one being held responsible. So this is going to be our demand going forward. But also I think we're part of the wider housing movement. I think those who are campaigning for justice for Grenfell, we're part of a housing movement that is impacting on the whole country, really, that, you know, that impacts in terms of actually people's rights to somewhere habitable, to have to live somewhere that is safe, to, you know, there's somewhere that is decent. Um, so, you know, they all those demands that um, I think the community want to see in terms of change, um, you know, and we want to be able to, I think, heal as a community. I know we don't use those words sometimes in politics, um, you know, but it's so important because this is a community, you know, that was already disadvantaged in a number of ways before Grenfell, you know, and yeah. Grenfell has had a massive additional impact. And so, um, as I said, with the cost of living crisis we're facing, I think it's really important that we're able to 
show solidarity to the community that we all stand together collectively because yeah. it's collective you know it's important that the community doesn't feel that it's just us who have to fight this battle we have to feel that we're part of a collective um you know and there are really good solid traditions in this country of coll collective struggle now can i just come in and, and and say that there is a way we can show um solidarity and uh, with uh, people in in Gren uh, the grenfell survivors and people around the area um which is um the the walk the silent walk could you tell us about when that is and, and what happens yes so um there'll be a silent walk there'll be a service at four o'clock a multi-faith service at the base of the tower and everyone's welcome to watch. it'll be live streamed around there so people are, are welcome to come and watch that and then at we are gathering at six o'clock um outside the methodist church in lancaster road um, which is opposite the tower um, to leave about 6 30 for um, a silent walk and back and then there will be speeches so i'm hoping i really hope that we can get as much campaigning much every you know everyone if you are it is possible to come you know do come um down to london um, i'm hoping that we get a we get a lot of support from the the trade unions because we also know that actually, you know, we can stand on the side of the road making noise, um, but it is workers who actually, well, they live in homes, they're not just workers, and they actually have given us consistent support from, you know, from the get go and will continue to give us consistent report, uh, support. So um, I would really welcome everybody. It's an, it is a, a very amazing. Um, yeah. You it's know, a very powerful, uh, powerful walk, uh, yeah. gesture to walk in silence. I was there the first walk, um, and it was unbelievable. Uh, and I've been a for a few walks. It's on Tuesday. So, what time again? Tuesday to gathering at six to six. leave at six thirty. Right. So, if people can who are in London or around London can come to um, Labrick Grove Tube Station, get to Lancaster Road uh, at six p.m. on Tuesday, and show solidarity with. Gwenfell and all the people in the community. Thank you very much, Moira, for coming you. on. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.